Come on, Grand Design, you can do better than this. Wait till you see what we found. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And sometimes it can be difficult to live amazing when you've got strobing lights in your, <laughs> in your fifth wheel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, first of all, we should explain that we are full-time RVers. We have been on the road for two years, and our current rig we've had for nine months, and it is a Grand Design Solitude fifth wheel, a 310 GK, a 2020 model. Mm -hmm. And we've had all sorts of problems. So we actually did a video, it's a separate video about some problems that we've had, and we also have a video tour. But today, what's happening today? <laughs> well. From the beginning, I didn't catch it in the walkthrough, but shortly after that, I noticed that when we were dry camping, if I was, if I used the... Well, hold on. For those of you that don't know, dry camping means that you're not plugged in to electricity or water or sewer. You're right. just, you're parked you're, either in a Walmart or out in the boonies or someone's driveway. You're running off of your, your water tank, your onboard water tank, and you're running off of of uh, your battery or a generator if you have one. Or solar. So the difference with the dry camping is that we're using the water pump and the water pump We're dealing with the fact that we don't like the flashing lights. Oh yeah, nobody would like <laughs> Nobody would like the flashing lights. The room lights are LED, the pump and 12 volts and the pump is also a 12 volt circuit. So what was step one? Check battery voltage. Right, because if the battery was low, it would actually kind of strain. Like, you know, when you start a car with a low battery, you know, the lights dim, that kind of thing. So if you have a voltmeter, this is DC, this is AC. See the little wavy line? That tells you that it's that it's AC in the, the straight line with the dotted line. That tells you it's DC. We're in the 20 volt scale because we're testing a 12 volt battery. And that makes sense to who? <laughs> Anybody that has a voltmeter All right. that knows how to use one. It checked out okay. The next thing I did is I went to the pump, make sure we didn't have any restrictions that was making the pump work harder than it should. Yeah, because it sounded like the pump was straining and we thought, oh my gosh, are we going to have to replace it? Which wouldn't have been a problem. I mean, it's under warranty, so just I would reach out to Grand Design. They'd send me a new one and I'd, I would install it. If you're going to do this life full time, you need to have a certain basic skill level for doing minor repairs. I'm lucky enough that I have a very strong technical background so I can do most repairs myself. We haven't had to take it in for anything. <laughs> and I'm lucky too Not that I have him. That, oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean I've been able to repair everything on the road and, and uh, if if you're gonna have to take it into a dealer, you know, good luck with your dealer. Uh, right, because dealers can be well, slow for one. You yeah. may lose your rig for weeks or even months. months. So let's talk about what the problem was. So so after we checked everything, then we went on to the forums, right? Right. Yeah, we looked to see if anybody else was having the problem, and they were. <laughs> and yet this is actually what Grand Design does for all of the rigs that we know of, that when you're using your pump, when you're dry camping, the the lights are going to flash. Once I figured out, okay, it's a, it's a circuit problem. All right, now flip it over. Okay. This is the water pump. This is, and this is the power supply to the water pump. And it's spliced in with this. It's also the power supply for the front awning. It's also piggybacked with these two switches, which are the electric heat water heater and the gas water heater. It is also piggybacked to this. Oh, that's the slide. Oh, yeah. So the most frustrating thing about finding that was what? Well, that they had four or five empty fuse slots that they could have tapped into. Right like, next to it. They right could have given yeah. that pump yep. its own they dedicated fuse. could have and should have given it its own dedicated circuit. So would it have cost more money for them to do that? Nope. Would it have taken more time for them to do it? Nope. 
So there's no reason why they couldn't have just plunked that wire right into its own circuit. Right. So what's the fix? So first let's talk about the expertise. What level of expertise do you need? And this one really is not much more than a minor repair that we're talking about. It sounds complicated, but it really is, uh, it's pretty basic. Right, and you're dealing with electricity. <laughs> well, 12 volt, yeah, DC, not, not 120 AC. I assume you all know the difference, but 12 volt DC is what's in your automobile, a battery that with two cables that run off of it. You're not gonna get shocked on a 12 volt DC system. You're not? No. Okay, no. okay. Never. So it's not that hard to fix. No. What tools do you need? A screwdriver, a pair of wire strippers, a pair of wire crimpers, a length of wire and a couple of butt connectors. And so we're gonna put links to everything you need in the description. What actually did you do to fix it? I gave it its own fuse and I ran a wire from the fuse panel up to the um, switch panel. And that's the, the hardest part of the job is, is that. It goes through a chase down um, behind the, the fuse panel, behind the wall. So you want to find your fuse panel and then you want to find your pump switch, where your pump switch is, and that distance has to be linked. That's something else you're going to need. You're going to need a fish tape. And uh, if you don't know what that is, we'll put it in the description. It looks like a piece of wire, but it's solid. You shove it down the, the chase and it comes out on the, on the other end. You tape the wire to that and you pull and you pull the uh, wire up. Just kind of like fishing. You yeah, <laughs> it's, it just as the name implies. It's, it's, <laughs> send that line down yep. and then you tape what you need yep. and then bring it back up. Yep. I used a borescope as my fish tape. And what that is, it's, it's a camera that you can shove down into small places. And, uh, and it's kind of, it's not rigid, but it bends. But, but it's like uh, a kind of a thick wire with a, with a camera and a light at the end. It might have been easier with a fish tape, I don't know. So how long did it take to repair this? Oh, half hour. Yeah, yeah, and most of that half hour, like was, 25 minutes of it, was actually fishing that wire. Yeah. But once we had yeah. that done, it was just plug and play, really. Yeah, pretty much. I cut the piggyback, and I used, this is the wire that I cut right here. I took the power wire from the fuse and connected it to that piggyback wire. So now all of those switches are, are powered again. I used the dedicated circuit that I created to go to just the water pump switch. You stripped about a third of an inch of the uh, insulation off, three, four millimeters for those of you who use the metric system. and. Oh, so you don't have to twist them together. No, you shouldn't. And you just put that on. You get a pair, good pair of crimpers. As long as they fit in there, they're, they'll, they're fine. So now you've got your wire joined together and in a norm with a normal butt connector you would be finished except that you would actually want to squeeze the the outer edges of the insulation to clamp it down onto the wires but what you do with this style butt connector is you put heat to it and this will actually shrink onto the wire now this particular one gives you a range of temperatures that you can adjust it to one of the things you want to do when you're making any electrical connection is get shrink wrap style connectors. And if you watch closely, you'll see that the plastic part actually shrinks onto the wire. Alright, so the biggest bonus about this fix, besides that we no longer have flashing lights, is what? Well, it makes the pump work more efficiently. Giving it its own dedicated circuit, it's going to work much better. It's no longer under a strain. We get better water flow and pressure. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's more, it, less pulsating. And yeah, more so just I was going to say, it, it, it used to pulse. Now it runs pretty, pretty constant. Yeah, so if you have strobe lights, you can choose to just d disco the night away, right? <laughs> yeah, you might like it if, yeah. you're, if you're from the 70s and it reminds <laughs> you of uh, those days in the disco. <laughs> then, then keep it. Uh, but if not, uh, just let us know how this fix works for you. Thank you.